welcome to another episode of the Walpole Business Spotlight, brought to you through the efforts of the Walpole Chamber of Commerce and Walpole Media TV. My name's Harry Brusades, and I'm your host, and I'm the president of the Chamber of Commerce as well. The mission of the show is to bring into spotlight local businesses, sales professionals, and business services like um, town services like the Walpole Recreation Department, uh, so our residents and our consumers can make knowledgeable good buying decisions and we're able to promote the people in Walpole that we know, like, and trust. So my guest today is Patrick Shield from the Walpole Recreation Department. Harry, great to be here. Thanks for having me. Thank you, Patrick, for being here. So you're no stranger to this TV set, I believe. No, I've been on here a couple times and I want to thank Walpole Media uh, for having me back on again. I was on a couple times with Bob Murphy, um, who does a great program of his own. Uh, just kind of put a spotlight on what the recreation department does, and um, the Walpo Media has been great bringing us on, so we can highlight some of the other stuff we're doing. Uh, so we did something this past fall for the Jarvis Harvest, which we do at Jarvis Farm. So it's 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 great to be back on it. I saw that show; that was very informational. So briefly, um, you've been with the t uh, rec department now for almost two years. That's right, coming on two years this spring. So the time flies by really quickly All right. when you're having fun, that's right. So we'll go into that a little bit more, but uh, let's first step back and talk a little bit more about you. Okay. So I've done a little quick research and I did see something about somebody calling you like a foxhole person or something. I don't know where oh, that came from. Fo foxhole <laughs> person, maybe. Okay. I don't know. I don't know who, who said that. I've, I've heard that phrase before um, and I think that I, I, I like to consider myself kind of a loyal guy to, to my friends and, and people who show some loyalty as well. And um, for those who are familiar with the recreation department, um, we've, we've really taken a huge effort to revamp some of the services and the programs that we, we, we do at Blackburn Hall. And it's been a, a pretty trying almost two years. Uh, I think we've made a lot of progress. We're able to um, We've been able to expand a lot of the services we were provi uh, providing, um, focus on the quality of the services, the existing services that we were doing, and it's it's been um, it's been it's been a challenge. But I, it's something that I enjoy, and it's something that I'm, I'm very grateful for my staff. I've got a very talented staff at the rec department, um, and the, I know they're loyal to the department. They're loyal to the town. And that's something that I try um, to express as well. So, so did, you, did that have to have anything to do with like were you born in Foxborough or something? Or oh no, I think it was more like a, a foxhole. You're in a foxhole with oh, somebody. Okay. People you can put your trust into. Because right. no, I thought I, that you. I'm not Foxborough. All right. Because I thought kid. that you were born in Walpole. Is that correct? Born in Walpole, raised okay. in Walpole, went to Walpole High School. I graduated um, from Walpole High School with my fiance. Both of us. Went to Walpole High School together. Um, still live in Walpole, working for the town. I, I love the town. It's been a great town to me, um, and I'm, I'm really grateful for the opportunity um, to work for the town and be able to give back to the residents. So, um, what class were you guys? Walpole? Class of 2005. I'm okay. kind of a kind of a young guy, but. And so I saw a picture of you probably walking in a parade, and I don't know if you were campaigning for somebody. Uh, prob probably. Um, I, so. Back a long time ago, a long time ago, I had run for um, a seat on the board of selectmen, and I was unsuccessful. But I'm sure that's that's probably the picture you saw. Um, okay. Me campaigning, waving, uh, always waving at people. How old um, were you then? I was 21. 21. Holy cow. Yeah, I was young, young buck. Um, 21, and then I, after that, I, I ran for a seat on the school committee and was successful. And I did three years in the Walpole School Committee, which I really enjoyed. Uh, um, really enjoyed. The work that we did, it was really rewarding, um, and uh, again, it gave me an opportunity to give back to the town that I, I love so much. And how old, you, how old were you when you were on the school committee? Uh, I served when I was uh, 24 to 27, I think. Interesting. Yeah. What type of perspective did you bring to the school committee? I assume that was very different to have somebody so young. It was different. So it was different, especially considering um, I don't have kids. and. I was very upfront about that, um, and then in my kind of in my former life, uh, my previous job, I worked at the state house. I did a lot of um, budget policy, districts uh, matters. So uh, in in that capacity, I was very familiar with state government, very familiar with um, the state budget, and uh, I don't know if you're how familiar you're in 
tune with how school budgets operate, but they depend on a lot that they receive from the state government. So it comes in the form of, it's called Chapter 70 money. Um, there's also a special education formula grant. Um, and it, 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 again, mandates too. This is The state has a very large part of what the school department does. So um, I was able to take my perspective from the state house and bring it with, with me to the school committee and then vice versa. The experiences that I was um, privy to as a member of the school committee interacting with a superintendent and school administration able to weigh in on matters that were taking place at the state house so uh, it was good good two-way road I, again I was really grateful for the opportunity um, and the work that we that we were doing and that led you to also work as d district director with uh, Senator Timothy that's right so um, actually even further back before I was before I had attempted that attempt on the board of selectmen uh, I was a young political science student at the University of Massachusetts, Boston. I just transferred there looking to try to get an internship um, somewhere in state government. And just coincidentally, I bumped into Senator Timothy in the grocery store. I was working at Stop and Shop at the time. Um, and he offered me an internship. We had a conversation, he offered me an internship, and that's kind of how it really how it all started. Nice. Um, so, um, so, yeah, we're worked for him after I graduated from college and, and kind of here I am t here I am today. So was it an anthropology minor? I, actually yeah <laughs> I had these delusions that I was gonna go become Indiana Jones out <laughs> in different parts of Africa and go on types of adventure and I realized that okay maybe that's not really gonna happen it's not gonna work out the way I'm hoping it's going to do so I, I ended up changing my major to be a, a political science major. Okay which still isn't super practical, but maybe a little bit more practical than an anthropology major. At least I was using that, so. Yeah. My daughter, as a University of South Carolina student, is majoring in biology and minoring in anthropology, and I'm like, why? Yeah. What? <laughs> she's, like, she's coming up with those same reasons. Like, I'll go this country, I'll go that country, I'll do this It'll be research. great, I'll wear a fedora, leather jacket, <laughs> yeah. and have a whip, it'll be, no, Patrick, that's not happening. <laughs> So you were definitely, uh, you were all involved in the town of Walpole and, and really giving back and being involved. Um, how did that opportunity arise with the rec department and why, and why did you jump at that? Sure, so um, <laughs> I don't think it's a secret that there was a period of, that the rec department was experiencing, um, it was pretty tumultuous at the, the recreation department um, from a business perspective. And they had some great staff there that were great with the programming. Um, they, they really, and in fact, if you compare what the town of Walpole offers in comparison to comparable communities, the offerings from the rec department here are, they're, they're significantly m more of them than what the other communities can provide. And I really have to give credit to uh, the staff that was at the recreation department at the, at the time. <laughs> However, there were, there were parts of the business operation that were suffering, and that's when, um, after a series of different directors, I got a call from the, the town administrator explaining the situation and given my experience in government and um, knowledge of the community, I, we had a discussion where we thought that it might fit and that's kind of how I got involved with the recreation department and I think we've, we've made a lot of progress uh, with our, our financial operations, um, with our business operations. Um, and I'm really proud of that and I, I have to give some of that credit to the assistant director, uh, Brendan Croak, um, who is pretty much my partner at the rec department. We're, we're a great team, and I, I give, give a lot of credit to him as well. Yeah, just to list some of the people that are over there doing a great job, you've got Brendan Croak, assistant rec director, business manager, Lauren McCumber, program coordinator, Ariel Carney, program coordinator, and Sarah Hootstein. That's right, and Sarah's our most recent um, <coughs> She, she just joined the department this past summer and she's been working out great. <coughs> and I know that you've had, a couple of my kids have gone through some of the programs. Okay. Whether it be soccer or baseball or softball. And um, I know that you have a lot of the coaches are high school volunteers or, or are They're they employees? employees? Yeah, paid employees. A lot okay. of them are, uh, so for instance, um, this, this Saturday we have basketball at Blackburn Hall and Fisher School. And through the course of the year we we probably employ about 200 high school students, so they could be counselors, they could be coaches, they could be lifeguards, so we pretty much run the gambit. Of, um, so we, we probably employ 
about 200 high school students through the course of the year. Oh, wow. And um, yeah, it's great. It keeps keeps them out of trouble. Uh, they come, they'll come grab uh, the summer job, so it keeps them out of the trouble through the summer. Um, great for their resumes. For great high school, for their resumes, college. money in their pocket, so it works yeah. out great. Yeah. What do they get? Minimum wage over there? Uh, that's right. Yeah. Of course, yeah. Is that Which, like ten bucks an hour. Now? Just went up eleven bucks an hour. Oh, nice. January first. What went a up country. To 11, yeah. So just to help you, because you might I'm not sure if you know it off the top of your head, the mission statement. I want me to read it off for you. <laughs> no, I get this. The okay. mission <laughs> statement of the Walpole Recreation Department is to improve the quality of life for Walpole residents by offering first-rate programming that meets the recreational, educational, and cultural needs of the community. How'd I do? Pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah, <laughs> I'll take oh, it. Pretty good. It was, I would say 90% accurate as far as perfect. Okay. Uh, and then to take pride in our facilities by keeping themselves and well-maintained for people of all ages, our hope is to make Walpole the place to be for family fun. So, so when we think of park and recreation, uh, the first thought is it's for the kids. Yep. So that's not true. Kids and families is pretty much where we focus our primary attention. Mm -hmm. Um, it's not true because we do a lot of a lot of programs, activities, events for the whole family, and then specific age groups. So you mentioned you read off the um, individuals that work with me at the recreation department. Each we each have our own specific areas of priority. So for instance, Lauren focuses on um, children and youth. She'll do some programs for children as young as two and a half and um, the basketball program I mentioned this weekend um, th that runs up to the age of eight eight years old um, we do some stuff Sarah focuses on once they really get out of elementary school teenagers uh, in middle school and early high school so she'll be doing programs like um, middle school dances we're doing this new thing called the kids night in uh, which they'll come to Blackburn Hall. We were going to do it a couple Saturdays ago, but there was a, a snow, actually this past Saturday, to be honest, where they had the snowstorm. We, we have them come to Blackburn Hall. We'll show a movie, have pizza. Again, keeps them out of trouble, uh, gives the parents. It's kids' night in, parents' night out. It's the way we, we were marketing it. Um, nice. But we also have this new, we did the, these new activity nights. So this, this past, I think it was November, these video game trucks. So for kids' grades one through, uh, no, I'm sorry, kids in uh, middle school, that come play big activity trucks, these big I've seen almost trailer trucks, trucks yep, yep. where they play video games inside. We had laser tag inside Blackburn, so that was kind of marketed um, to middle school students, but we also do stuff for high school students, adults. I don't know if you saw it in the Wumpel Times this past week, we're doing pickleball for, for older adults and seniors what right is, at Blackburn Hall. I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> I was just, you know, it's funny because I, I, it's, it's a variation of tennis, table tennis, Badminton, and it's really kind of picked up. It's really popular in Florida. Okay. The rules are really complicated. Don't ask me to explain it because I can't do it. But um, it generates a lot of interest. People really enjoy it. So my point was, you know, again, it, a lot of activities for the kids, but there's adult education that's geared exactly that's right. just to the adults. And I'm, I'm not sure if the general public is aware enough that there are great programs and activities for them to take part of. You know. Whether it's you've got you probably have instructors that are involved in that that's their career and then they're giving back to the community that's right. through one of these programs. So whether it's just to pick a few, um, you know, acting skills for our business, uh, becoming a mindful eater, CPR training, um, is insanity workout. That's right. Okay, yeah. not a psycho psychological. Nope, exam. not. <laughs> <laughs> Although we should look into that. <laughs> um, public speaking with confidence. Some really nice stuff here. Um, so, one thing that I, and I, don't, I think you're a little bit younger than me, uh, and I'm not sure if you had this when you were younger, but probably one of the best parts of my younger life was park and rec during the summer. Yeah. And we used to go to our elementary schools and spend all day, all summer, that was it. Yeah. You know, it was a different world back then in the 70s. Sure. And there, were, there weren't video games, and there, right. you know, we used certainly to, weren't cell phones. No, nothing. And it was just go outside and try to figure out what to do, yeah. and make up games, whether it's kick the can or relievio. Right. We played those all day and all night. But you know, 8 a.m. We used to always take our bikes down to the elementary school, spend all day uh, doing stuff. Maybe go back for lunch uh, at home, and then come back, and and then that was your day. And we'd go to other schools and play them in baseball or yeah. football or soccer. Um, so as we know, that's kind of all gone away. 
with Prop 2 and a half, I think that was the big part of it back then. For the financing, yeah, so we still do a lot of summer programs. So at Blackburn <coughs> Hall, we have a program called uh, Little Records, essentially kind of the same thing. That's for kids ages two and a half, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, ages two and a half to seven. Um, that's at Blackburn Hall. Same thing, they, they do a whole bunch of activities, arts and crafts, play games. Uh, on hot days, they, they just take a walk over to the town pool, they come back, uh, have lunch together. And uh, so that's for the younger kids. Uh, after, after, the, after that age, they move into, it used to be called Summer Rec, and it used to be at the Boyden Elementary School. Um, and we've since changed that to, it's now Walpole Woods at Jarvis Farm, uh, which was great. We did our first full year, of, uh, full summer of that uh, in 2016. And it was great. We had the cabins, it was that camp experience. Um, so we, we did that and, and it was really successful. I think uh, we've, we certainly have some areas that we, we're gonna try to improve upon for next year, but we're looking forward to doing that again. So the individual schools, elementary schools per se, they don't have really some activities for the summer, right? They're Not really, down. they're pretty much closed down. So you've got the events that you guys do at the Park and Rec at Blackburn. Yep. Um, so now let's talk about Jarvis Farm. Okay. All right, so the town just acquired that last year or the I year think, before? Yeah, I think November 2014, okay. I think, October. And I know this summer there were, it was a run up to do that, get that whole thing kicked off and you guys just be able, just pulled that off. Yeah. Um, so now going into next year, well tell me a little bit about maybe the stops and starts or what you learned or what happened this year and then we can talk about sure. next year. Sure, so as, as you mentioned the town recently acquired uh, the land at Jarvis Farm and for those of the public who aren't familiar with it, it's on uh, Common Street over by McMorgan's. It used to be the former Sharon Country Day Camp, and if you drive down there, uh, there's about, I think, 27 cabins, uh, lake, big open field, basketball nets, uh, the work. So it's, it's perfect uh, because it used to be a campground. And it's just, we're happy that we're, we're able to kind of fill in uh, where Sharon Country Day Camp left off. Um, it took some time to, before the rec department was able to really step into that role. Uh, there was an advisory committee. They were researching really all options before the rec department could proceed. Um, but we, we managed to coordinate that program, market it, and get it into place um, for July 5th. July 5th was the first day. I was really, really nervous. <laughs> it, July 5th was a Tuesday this year, and it was, it was pouring raining that day. So I remember being out there with my umbrella as parents were driving down, dropping their kids off looking at how, how bad it was raining, saying, oh my God, this is, <laughs> this is not a good sign. But we ended up, uh, it was eight weeks this past summer, um, and it was great. The numbers for that program were better than the numbers that we had for the summer rec program at the Boyden School. <coughs> so, it was Sharon Day Camp, That's right? right yeah. So the, it's not, it was never an overnight type of thing? It was never an overnight thing. Okay. They think they had isolated, um, occasions where they would do an overnight uh, once or twice a summer maybe, uh, but it wasn't an overnight camp, no. So I've been there a couple times for the, I think twice now, because you did the Jarvis Harvest twice That's now. right, yep. Um, so it looks like a great spot, great location. So I guess what happened was the water department purchased it, is that how it kind of came about? That's right, so it's it was technically part, so town, it went to town meeting in 2014 and it was a, a, an article that was sponsored by the water department. So technically, that's right. The, it's property that, I don't want to say belongs to the water, but it's under the, the water department's jurisdiction. So now, is, how many acres are up there? I always blank in that number. I, I want to say like 20, 26 acres. Okay. And there is a pond there. There's a I pond. saw some right. small docks. And That's stuff. right. Yep. So, th were you able this year to use the water and the pond and the lake and boating? And no, it, it was that was one of our top priorities. We wanted to get it right, um, and it required a lot of cleaning up. However, if we drained the pond back in early spring, we were nervous. Drain it to clean it. So, if we drain the pond to clean it, put down new sand. We were nervous that we weren't going to get enough rainfall to refill the pond back up. And sure enough, we had probably one of the worst droughts this past sure. summer. So yeah. had we done that, had we gotten into a place, we wouldn't have had swimming there anyway because there just wouldn't have been enough water. Mm -hmm. So we decided to put it on hold for this summer. This is an early, uh, I'm sorry, late, late spring uh, decision. Put it on hold for the summer. We offered other uh, water activities big inflatable water slides. I don't know if you've seen the pictures, but uh, the kids seemed to really enjoy it. It was a good alternative. 
it was a really hot summer, so I'm happy that we were able to have some water activities to keep the kids cool. Mm -hmm. um, but the plan, I just met with the water superintendent last week, and it looks like we're, we're on our way toward having swimming there next year. Or this year, I suppose. Okay. It's January. I don't know when this is going to air, but it's January, but I keep saying this year. So, and so the camps will start in early July again. That's is right. That yep. Okay. Um, is it weekly camps, or is it a whole summer that you sign up for? <laughs> whole summer. Um, we offered all summer long. Uh, the original direction we wanted to go with Walpole Woods was to kind of keep it separate from that drop-off uh, activity. Um, so we were initially marketing it for it was split it up one, monthly sessions and we we heard from the community that's not what they were interested in so we tried to do it two week sessions they weren't interested in that so we tried to do a week camp session they weren't interested in that so we have a, a it's almost like an a la carte option if you want to just drop your kid off for the day fantastic we've got daily options for you if you want to do a week session sign up for the week and it's at a reduced rate if you sign up for the week it helps us so we can prepare for staff, plan for supplies, um, and that's that was that was the model that Summer Rec had at Boyden School. I think it's the model that families in Walpole are accustomed to and are used to, and is more convenient for them, more convenient option for them. So, say if something comes up, they're not committed to sending their kids to the program. They can they can take them out for the day, or if, if they need something. They can just drop them off, and we've got we've got an option. So for that, that runs through the whole month of August as well. We're changing July it this year. Um, it, it did go all the way through the end of August last year, and we found the last two weeks of summer, parents just would like to go away before school starts. Um, sure. So we're cutting that off mid August uh, this year, and then we're going to have a, a program at, back at Blackburn called Endless Summer, the last two weeks of August. So for those families who are still looking for that summer experience for their kids, they can just bring them to Blackburn Hall. They'll still have the swimming option of the town pool. Ice cream truck will come by. Um, so great games and activities. What time would is drop off in the morning? Uh, Eight thirty in the morning. Eight thirty to four thirty. Till four thirty. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's a, and I I can only imagine it must be very economical for parents to pay for whether it would be a week or two weeks or a day. Sure. Event compared to some other offerings. And that's that are just out there. it. At the end of the day, we're not a private camp. We're not looking to generate a certain profit. Um, you know, we've we've got direct costs, so we just look to cover those direct costs. Um, so we're able to provide it at a pretty um, affordable rate for a lot of families. Very nice. Um, what other offerings are there, like at the camp? Is there Wi-Fi available? Is there <laughs> other access, or is it no, like, you know, let's shut off everything else, outside world, let's have it more of a country Funny you mention that. So. That, that Walpole Woods goes up until sixth grade. We're, we're looking at offering, it's almost like a spin-off for that, uh, for kids in seventh and eighth grade before they become um, eligible to start working. And that would be kind of like a feeder program for our counselor positions. Um, and we're thinking about calling that spin-off program unplugged and kind of having that, that element to it. Um, leave, your, leave your phones at the door. Nice. Come on, we're gonna go out and play. Let's you know, kick the can. Let's go play some yeah. kickball, you know? Yeah, um, bring it back to the basics. Back to the around, basics, exactly. Breathing in the near, the regular, you know, the normal air. Yeah, that's good stuff. So again, just to close out over there. So you get your Jarvis Harvest that you pull off in the fall. Yeah, that's been a great event. Um, and then you get your summer camps. Anything else that might happen over there? Uh, so, uh, as far as the things that we do, um, we we help out with. There's an obstacle challenge, usually around Labor Day weekend. They did it for the second time this this past year. I have to give credit to um, Joe Grant, um, who also runs the Boyden 5K and Fun Run, or has been doing that. Um, I think he's, he's passed that on to somebody else. But he's really responsible for that obstacle challenge with our help. Um, so that, that takes place around Labor Day weekend. And I'm glad to see there are a lot of other organizations and groups in towns that are using their property. So um, Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts, they each did sleepovers there. Uh, Lenore Little League plays in the baseball diamonds. Um, so it's really become you know, I think we're going to be the primary user of the property, we being the rec department, but I'm glad to see other groups and entities really kind of getting in there and making use of such a, such a valuable resource. That's awesome. Yeah. So, um, you know, the, the Walpole Rec Department has another big event coming up, Walpole Day. Walpole that's Day. Your, that's your day. <laughs> that's our day. That's everything you got to do. And uh, what did we say it was, May 13th? Saturday, May 13th, yeah. Okay. It's 
So big parade in the morning as usual. That's right, as usual. And it's getting bigger and bigger. The, bigger the, and bigger, yeah. The event itself has become incredible. I think last year, did we say it was a little over 1,000, 1,200? Yeah, I think so. I there? think that's right, yeah. I mean, I had the bumper stickers with the yeah. rec um, booth that we had, and I gave out at least 600 okay. bumper stickers. So I thought it was a great event. It was a beautiful day. Uh, so that's another big thing. Again, Walpole Day, Saturday, May 13th. Saturday, May 13th. Okay. Uh, pray for good weather. <laughs> it really all comes down to the weather, and we really have to thank our, our partners and our sponsors, uh, community leaders, and just every Walpole resident that comes through there um, because it's a great day. As you know, Walpole's a, a unique place, so it's a great day for residents to come and really celebrate that unique nature that is Walpole, that unique spirit. So um, sure I have is. to thank all those people that are, it's not, we, we pull the strings, we, we pull it all together, but um, it's really a, a day for the community. Yeah, you know, we keep, we keep a lot of us that are giving back and getting involved in the town, um, you know, we're all, we're all trying to move forward, um, revitalize, renew, but we also want to make sure that we keep that historical value that Walpole's always had, sure. and like you said, has made us very different sure. than other towns. Sure. So it's a unique synergy that we have. Speaking of synergy, um, I also want to thank you uh, the Walpole Rec Department has been a great partner with the Walpole Chamber of Commerce. You know, you guys, we've been back and forth trying to promote each other. Uh, you're also on the board of directors, and you've yep, been a great right. helping hand there. Thank you. Um, so before we finish, um, again, I think you quickly mentioned something about a fiance. Yeah, that's right. I'm getting, I'm engaged to getting married in October of this year. Right. Uh, we just had a wedding up in New Hampshire this past weekend. Um, it was a beautiful wedding up in Meredith, New Hampshire. I'm like, oh my God, wake up call. We have so much to do. So, um, What's your fiance's name? Amanda, Amanda, Amanda. Madden. Okay. Yeah. Well, congratulations. Thank you very that. much. Appreciate it. And uh, we'll finish off with you know anything personally, quick hobbies. I see that you're a fish. You like fishing? Love fishing, love the outdoors. I wouldn't be a recreation guy if I didn't like being outside. Um, I love national parks. Goal to try to get to every national park before I die. So last year I was very fortunate. We, um, Amanda and I, we were able to go to Yellowstone and Grand Teton National Park. So I love being outdoors, love fishing, but yeah. Awesome. So in, in just to wrap up, um, you know, I think almost everybody knows how to get to the Walpole Rec Department. It's right at Blackburn Blackburn Hall. Blackburn Hall, come on down. And um, as far as the webpage, it's through the uh, town website, correct? Yeah, or you can just go right on to walpolerec.com. That leads right to our web website. Okay, and the main line is 508 660 Six three five three. That's correct. Looks like they're open Monday through Friday, nine to five, but there's always somebody in there. Always somebody in there, and um, my information's right on the website. So, if anybody ever has any ideas or if they'd like to see certain programs and services, give me a call directly. Shoot me an email directly. I'd, I'd be happy to, to to meet and talk to anybody about any great ideas that they have. Thank you, sir. Thanks, Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Uh, just want to finish the show by again thanking Patrick for being here today. Um, we hope that this was again very informative for our Walpole residents. Uh, again, it's all about getting to know people that are involved in the community, get to know business owners, departments, so we can get to know, like, and trust these people so our residents can make good buying decisions, informed decisions, and tell everybody else that they know about this great stuff and this great town um, and take it from there. So thank you again. Be well, be safe. Have a great day.